Hey Robot Fans, Fried Egg here with episode 12 of our 5 Sculling slash High Scoring Guide. We're going to be doing Choke Point on War Mage. And I'm recording this... <laughs> uh, let me see. I had to record this actual playthrough, I think, two or three times because the recordings got messed up. And this is actually, I think, my third time commentating this. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a little bit over this stage, but I'm not going to let that stop me from giving you guys some good good info and good tips here. So, I just, I, I literally just botched this recording like two minutes ago, so I'm going to take a, a few seconds here to pick my traps, which I will talk about something real quick. The setup you're going to see me use is pretty much the main setup I've been using for high scoring maps in the last two weeks and today's date I think is February or no excuse me February January like 13th or something 2012 so yeah this is me commentating this today and I probably recorded this about three four weeks ago but anyways this is what I've been doing to get high scores lately and I was able to get, in the last couple of weeks, I busted a bunch of high scores and got number one on a bunch of maps. I think I, I'm only Chambers currently seated number nice. one on a, maybe only the a couple now. Because uh, friends of mine have uh, gone in and trumped my scores, but that's okay. Anyways, I'll talk more about my uh, this trap setup in a little bit. I will first get back to this actual map we're playing. This is choke point, and when you first start out, you need to set up your kill box right where I'm setting it up in front of the bridge, because your 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 main kill box is going to be set up behind where we're at in e in either hall, and the problem is you're not going to have enough money right now to go ahead and barricade it, er, barricade everything properly and have enough money to build traps. So. You have to have this kill box set up here until I think round four, and then once once that's done, we go ahead and sell everything and move. So set up here and have at it. You might need to use crossbow a little bit in the beginning until you uh, get some more traps down some archers. But when when you have your sword along, really do your best to uh, use the sword because you'll, you'll be able to do some more combos with the sword just because it has a has a bigger uh, bigger area of effect I should say when you're slashing the sword you know it, it can hit multiple targets whereas arrows are only single target so there's my archers I put a little spike trap there yeah and just do your best to keep that lightning storm so the, the edge of the cloud is is uh, right right where they're gonna be stepping onto that tar and spikes do that thing right there. You don't want them. To, you don't want them getting zapped by lightning far outside of the kill box. Then that's just a waste of, of an enemy to get a combo. So, because you know, on well, on, on nightmare, the lightning doesn't one shot them, but on war mage it does. So, give you a little more conscious of that. Here we're gonna think we're putting archers, but I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade. Decisive. I like that. And now we have burning pitch. Which is going to add another plus two, or no, an additional plus one to our whole kill box setup. So, I just started seeing some plenty of fives and sixes, maybe some sevens now that I have that. So, I don't know if this is, well, can I see sevens? I think if, like, if, if everything was perfect, I could see a seven right now. So, you'll see five and sixes and lots of things. But, you know, that burning pitch is awesome. It's definitely. I think it's probably the the best thing in the game as far as when it comes to getting combos. I mean, just I mean, because it's, it's the only thing that consistently adds plus two. So, anyways, we're selling, sell everything. We're moving, moving on up to the. It's gonna be the east side. <laughs> uh, just a joke there. Uh, anyways, yeah, we're doing some advanced barricading here. Uh, this was this first showed us by Rogatin. Good. I just used single barricades to block off those those central lanes to the rift, and I just I was able to use two 
to block off that West Hall. Or as you could, before we knew about it, you, we, most of us were using two and three barricades to do that. Now we're, we're able to use less and save money. Uh, you save by doing that. You're saving yourself three barricades and or 2,100 coins. So you're able to now, in round four, you're going to be able to set up a entire like 100% working kill box that doesn't really need you're at 100% capacity basically that's what I'm trying to get at you're gonna have all your traps like you already have your burning pitch upgrade the only thing you need to upgrade between now and before the map's done is you need this to spend some money to get get uh get your overcurled springs and, and jagged steel and you know overcurled springs isn't even too isn't really too uh imperative on this stage it's only like two ogres right there is I'm checking my mace I put it too far to the left, so I gotta move it over a half tile. So yeah, now it's directly over my kill box, which is where you want it. And we're gonna throw up some archers. I was messing around with uh, some different spots here. I actually, where I put them first, I end up having to move them forward because I put them back away from the kill box a little bit too much and they weren't shooting consistently. But I'm gonna sell that one. Put them over here. And yes. And I'll explain what we're doing here. We're doing what my friends uh, Rogatin and Doc have come to call the five the five dice. And basically, our archer pattern is going to look like the five side of a dice or a die, I should say. You know, the same exact dot pattern. So, what what they've found. And well, I, haven't, I, I can't say I really helped anything besides just using it and saying, yeah, it works good. But the idea behind this is this spacing of the archers from not side to side, but from front to back gives you a consistent stream of arrows. Meaning you should, as, as enemies are running into the rift, you should never see arrows stop flying. Right here, I have my archers in a bad spot, so you're not really seeing it working properly. But I do, I think after a round or two, I'm going to go ahead and sell them and get them a little closer so they are working properly. But now, I mean, once, you, once, you, once you move your kill box here, this, this stage is uh, it's on gravy mode. It's just focus on getting those combos. Make sure during your breaks you don't spend too much time on stuff because this is warm age and you do have to worry about part times. But right here I'm trying to lightning stack. This is something I Doc Schmock would do a lot. And he swears by it. I don't really know. I, I personally just try to, if I know I can cast lightning, the lightning storm again, I switch to it real quick, throw the lightning cloud down, and get back to doing my thing. I just try to stick with that. So as you can see, we're already we're getting so we're already getting sevens, lots of fours, and we see lots of fives. But this setup, like I was telling you guys before, is primarily what I've been doing the last couple weeks. I've been getting some really really amazing scores. Like I think I got I don't know, was it 520,000 on it, I think Nightmare Twin Hall or something like that, something crazy. You know, I've gotten close to. Um, Close to, I broke 400,000 on library with it. Broke 400,000 on gateway with it. What else did I do? Um, that was impressive. Um, lunch break, I, I broke, um, well, I wasn't the first one to break 300,000, but I was able to get close to 400,000 on lunch break. Nightmare, I believe. Most of my high scores are on Nightmare. I was, that Nightmare is where I prefer to, to play and get high scores because it's a little more exciting. Because there's less room for error. More mage, you get the you get a lot of second chances because you can go ahead and sell shit real easy and completely change stuff up. Here I get whacked by the ogre. I'm a little disappointed about that because you know, me being stunned over there, I probably missed out on like five or six orcs I couldn't swing my, my sword out to get, my, get that combo point out of the game. But yeah, a little bit more on this on this uh, current my current build here. 
you can plug in, you know, different traps here. You don't have to do the same traps, but I mean, this this setup here where I have one trap in front of the 4x2. That's so that's technically breaking the whole idea of the 4x2 because you're not really supposed to have any traps in front, but a spike trap or like a brimstone can actually kind of produce some stuff in front. As you can see there, I just got a 7x on a, on a little rat, which is cool. I believe we, we have reports of as much as an 8x on a kobold, and I believe we've had a 10x on a, or a 9x on a kobold sapper, which is quite amazing. Um, but, like I was saying, this setup's been, been producing very, very well on both Nightmare and War Mage. And the only thing that's probably that probably trumps her right now, and I know that because there's a couple of my scores that have gotten beat, beaten by, uh, uh, I don't even know how to say the guy's name, Yggdrasil, Y G G Drassel or something like that. I don't know how, how he pronounces it, but he's been able to trounce a couple of my scores by going for primarily 11 X's on ogres, and. I mean, obviously it works, but I, I feel that doing using this setup, a, a 4x2 esque type setup, will uh, where you're going to be getting lots and lots of like six and sevens and maybe some eights on orcs, you're consistently going to see some big big scores, you know, top ten, top five scores than than the uh, 11x method. I mean, until people get really really good at it, I just think that. 11 X's are, depending on, on the stage and, and the amount of ogres, they can just be very, um, very inconsistent just because you're so reliant on the ogres and there's so many X factors that come into play when you're trying to combo a strictly with the ogres. Whereas with this, we're focusing on the orcs. I mean, there's really no X factor. It's like, you, you know you're going to be getting tons of 5, 6, and 7s. You just know it. Whereas if you're, you know, if you if you bone up and screw up on a on an ogre, you're trying to get 11 X on. You get you get a, a you know 4 X on or a 5 X. You you know that's that's a huge huge loss in, in points. <laughs> Whereas if you know you're, you're really trying to get sevens and you're getting sixes, I mean yeah it's, you you, you want to get those sevens, but it's, you know you're still getting a relatively good score for each one of those orcs. So it usually, it usually ends up panning out to be better, but. I mean, um, yeah. So you know, you guys just gotta try different things. And like I was saying, with this trap setup, you can you can plug in different traps. You know, bring a brimstone instead of spikes, or you can probably bring a steam trap instead of a, instead of a spring trap. Uh, the spring traps are mainly for they're very very useful for nightmare when you stage it with lots of ogres because um, they're they're what's gonna uh, you know get those ogres. They're gonna fling them back into your grinders and up into your maces and. There was really going to help kill those ogres fast. A, st a steam trap, I, I believe, can can somewhat, you know, do that, but not to the degree I think as the, uh, the spring trap. So, but you know, you guys experiment with whatever you want to experiment. You know, try stuff. See if you figure out something better. Well, we're about to come to a close here. I'm gonna do my little dance and see how we get. I believe I get 300,000. I think something like that. Get close to the top ten. This was never one of my favorite stages. That's why I never, I you know, I probably I stopped here. I was happy with it. I'm just gonna check out the leaderboard. Thirteenth. Okay, that's you know, that's good. I'm right behind my buddy Rogue and That's that's fine. I'm good with that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, guys, this has been Fried Egg with episode twelve of the War Mage High Scoring slash Five Sculling Guide. And uh, please stay tuned for episode 13, which I think is... I don't remember. But anyways, guys, take it easy. I'll talk to you later. See ya.